Professor Fisler, you have been working for many years on cancer research. Can you tell us a bit more about your research work and the way you conduct it? Yes, of course. Um, so first of all, thanks very much um, to the Fondasio ARC for awarding me with this prestigious award. And also congratulations to my co-awardee, Michael Taylor. Uh, and uh, this is already a, a first um, sign because uh, we have been working together for many years um, on this pro um, problem together. So um, my research is really focusing on brain tumor research, uh, one of the most challenges, challenging groups of um, tumors um, that we have left, uh, where still many patients are dying from their disease. And one of the biggest problems when we entered the field like 10, 15 years ago uh, was um, that um, brain tumors were really um, regarded into very broad categories. So um, currently we think that there are probably 200 different brain tumor entities, and, but we still only have eight or 10 different treatment regimens to treat these patients. And this, of course, um, is a very big problem. And what we have tried to do in a first step was to really um, systematically look at the heterogeneity of brain tumors and first of all, put all of the different brain tumor types into different baskets to make sure um, that we are also treating um, the right diagnosis. And um, this is pretty much coming with the transition from the, let's say, optic era into the molecular era. Because previously brain tumors were mostly diagnosed by a pathologist looking through the microscope and looking at the tissue. But this was not sufficient to really account for this tremendous heterogeneity. And now we have moved into a molecular classification system, uh, which, by the way, was also now uh, very much incorporated in the WHO classification for brain tumors, which is going to be issued this year, um, where we, for the first time now, primarily base brain tumor diagnostics on molecular aspects rather than just looking through the microscope. And this will help in the end to treat the patients in a more targeted or personalized way, as we say today. Thank you very much for this uh, precise answer. It is assumed that some creativity and even boldness are required to be a good researcher. Looking at your career so far, what would you say has been decisive in this sense and which decision has helped you to move forward with your work? Yes, I think that's true. Um, both boldness and creativity um, are necessary. Um, but this is also always coming from dealing directly with patients because it always makes you humble to realize that we cannot help many patients at this stage uh, with brain tumors. Um, and you basically cannot afford to really think very narrow in your research vision because you eventually want to cure more patients, ideally all patients, and uh, at the same time also reduce the side effects and the toxicity of the treatment that we are giving. And this requires obviously a bold approach and I think that this is also the motivation for both Michael Taylor and myself and our groups um, to really tackle this um, in a very collaborative manner. Uh, which I think is, the, is, is key um, um, to, to really um, um, get any further with this. Um, also, um, when looking at the fact that these, all of these individual small groups of tumors are very rare. So it only makes sense to really study them in a worldwide collaboration rather than everyone um, trying to figure it out by themselves. I understand. Cancer research is genuinely open to as you just said, international cooperation. How far does German cancer research contribute at international level in your specific field of research? Well, I think we, we can make one or two good examples here um, where um, we, we really try to pioneer this. One of them is that we have developed um, a bioinformatic algorithm to classify brain tumors based on their molecular fingerprints, which basically put onto a website for everyone in the world to use it. So everyone can upload their molecular fingerprints of tumors, and then they get uh, a PDF um, attachment to an email uh, with, the, uh, with the molecular diagnosis, a confidence score, mm -hmm. um, and also some additional readouts. And this website um, was always um, free for everyone to use um, right from the beginning. And we now um, have already more than 50,000 uploads to this website, which indicates, and this is really from all across the world. 
And uh, the same example, as I already mentioned, um, is probably also how this has influenced the, the WHO classification for brain tumors because everyone in the world is, is really a small community in the neuro-oncology field. Um, so eager to basically learn from each other and benefit from each other's previous experiences. And I think that's really, uh, in a way, exemplary um, also in our field um, that we work um, together so closely. And to put it in a nutshell, what would you tell young people and students to encourage them to choose a career in the field, in your field, of biomedical research? Well, if I had to choose again, I would definitely do it again because it's a very exciting field to work in, a very vibrant field because a lot of technological developments have happened um, over the um, past 10, 15 years, which we can now incorporate into our research. They are just tools, but they are very helpful tools, obviously. And I think that um, in the end, it's also um, pleasing um, to help the society, the, the patients. Um, so, so it's a creative and independent um, um, way of working. Um, but at the same time, you're doing something small to basically return um, to the society. And for me, this is very fulfilling. Professor Fister, I thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much.